What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode This is episode number 28 and today we are returning with a triple header with Aston Villa all in the Premier League And some big games today uh, Two games at home, the first one is the first game That's against Bournemouth who are playing quite well at the moment in the uh, league Seventh place right now and uh, in pretty good form under Eddie Howe But then, six days later, it's a big one We're away from home to take on Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium Against Pep's boys who right now are in third place And our third and final Again today, two days later at home on New Year's Eve as we take on Southampton as we'll try and enter 2019 in good form. And the January transfer window will open today as well. And I'll give you a sneak peek of my shortlist as well. But yeah, the first game is Bournemouth. There is something interesting to show you before the game though. As you can see, who's that scarab on? Oh, Tarkowski, his contract coming in here. Uh, we've got a risk of losing two players, Jed Steer and Carlos Heel. Uh, both have their deals that come at the end of the year. Both are 23 and over. Now, Steer he is going to go. He's 67 rated, 26 years old. We don't need him at this club, to be honest, and I don't really feel the need to keep him here. And as for Carlos Hill, this one's a little bit more interesting. Uh, of course, came back from his loan spell last season. 79 rated, 26 years old. Can play right mid and in a cam roll too. High, low work rate. So, okay stats. Four star, four star as well. But he's unhappy right now. He wants more game time. For some reason, there's no competitions listed there. That's a bit weird for any of my players. That's weird. But, um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's played okay in a couple of games this season. I'm not sure whether I'm going to give him a new deal or not. We'll think about it, but uh, we'll play the first game against Bournemouth first and then decide after that. So, yeah, first game, it's Bournemouth at home. Let's get a win. And with both clubs in really good form right now, both in the top seven, this should be a really intriguing battle to start today's triple header off. Uh, we, of course, playing our normal 3-5-2 for the game. We've been rotating the side a lot around recently uh, due to some inconsistent form. But heading into the game, Zagadu does keep his place in the back three. I'm liking him a lot in this team right now and Carlos Heel is going to play for a contract today starting on the right hand side Bustos drops to the bench let's see what the Spaniard can do and let's see whether he's worth that new contract or whether will we find letting him go on a free well the hosts come into this game with some very good statistics for their record here at home and it is uh, actually unparalleled in the league at the moment they've been terrific to watch Martin during this run, seven wins in eight games. You can't argue with that. If you're high low work rates, you won't contribute much on defense, which is a bit of a concern against a very good attack minded Bournemouth team. And that's where we're going to really miss Bustos in this game. But I want to see how he gets on. But the first shot's going to fall to Bournemouth. Deflected cross straight to Jordan Ibe. And there's nothing you could have done about that goal because a deflected ball across the pitch rolls to Jordan Ibe. And Bournemouth take the lead seven minutes in. Worst possible start. Cross takes a deflection and it drops straight to Ibe. And despite three lunges and Rainer's dive, the former Liverpool man gives Bournemouth the early lead. 1-0, worst possible start. We actually haven't been playing very well at late. I know we beat Spurs in the last episode 2-0, but it is true. In, in recent weeks, our league form has been pretty patchy, to say the very least. We drew 0-0 with West Ham. We lost at Newcastle. Barkley's now gone down as well as I surrender possession. I plays it through. Oh, and it almost That's dropped to Callum Wilson. Terrible first 20 minutes here at Villa Park. We're all over the place. Oh, it's one of those injuries for Barkley where he might run it off. He might not. At the moment, he hasn't. So that's a little bit concerning. As Grealish finds Brereton. He's not going to be forced off to that. I mean, it's not a serious injury, so that's good. But still not a great start for us. As Carlos Heel cuts inside and steal Heel. Lovely dribbling. Plays it back towards Delph. Went to the wrong man. He was supposed to go to Brereton. But Delph will have a go from range. We know he can strike him. And oh my goodness. Fabian Delph puts us back on level terms with an absolute rocket. Aston Villa 1, Bournemouth 1. And no one's raising their eyebrows due to that signing now. Fabian Delph has come back and scored some absolute belters. That pass was meant for Brereton when I overhit it, but I'm glad I did. Delph lets fly from 30 yards, and there is absolutely no chance for the Bosnian Azmir Begovic. What a goal by Fabian Delph. And if the fans didn't want him back at first, they're glad to have him back now. What a goal. What a goal from Fabian Delph. Absolute thunderbolt. As we do get back on level terms. But here come Bournemouth again. Been a great first half this. But there's Barkley winning it back. And he's ran off his injury too. Excellent news. As Brereton on the ball turns Nathan Ake. He's got Carlos Heal out wide. He'll find him. Heal on the ball. Can he cross? In it goes towards Kodja. Oh! 
And that just sums up Kodja's form at the moment. What a miss. First half in this game was fantastic. Second half so far has been very disappointing though. 90 minutes into the second half. Very little to report as we are still tied at 1-1. A draw not a bad result against a good Bournemouth side. But I think we can get a winner in this game. Let's find it. Grealish. Kodja. Shot blocked. Brereton. Over the bar. We've had the chances, but despite the wonderful goal from Delph, the finishing just hasn't been there today. Kodja flicks on towards Brereton, but Ake is there, and Bournemouth will clear with eight minutes to go. Is there still time for a late winning goal? Fry's header will drop to Alessandro Schutt. And now through to Grealish. And out wide is the man, Carlos Heel, playing for a contract, trying to turn Tyrone Mings and whip one in to Kodja. Oh, Schutt! Who fires it wide? And the referee is going to blow for a full time there as well. Final score at Villa Park. And sadly, it's another game without a win. Only one in our last four or possibly five in the Premier League now. A disappointing home draw. Had the chances but just couldn't take them. And the stats sum up what was a very weird game to start today's episode off between two informed teams. Five shots, apparently zero on target. But of course, it was the one where Del shot hit the underside of the bar and went in. Dominated possession. I thought our midfield play in this game was really good, particularly Fabian. Delph, who didn't misplace a single pass and, of course, scored the screamer as well. So he's man the match. But it's annoying for all of our possession, for all the chances we created, we couldn't find another goal. Last year, league's highest scorers in the championship scored goals for fun. But this year and in this recent run of form, goals are beginning to dry up. Not completely. We're still scoring a lot, but a little bit. And that is a bit of a concern heading into the new year. We were the league's highest scorers for quite a bit, but now we're the joint third highest scorers, uh, along with Liverpool as well. Well, and again, that, that is a little bit concerning because our game is mainly built on the goals we score. And in recent weeks, we've not really been firing on all cylinders. I'm not going to complain too much. We're in sixth place right now, 16 games in. It's been a really good start for Aston Villa. But again, just need to be a little bit more clinical in front of goal and notch a few more up. However, one thing we are going to do is offer Carlos Heel a new contract. Uh, right now, there is 3 million in the budget, 127 grand in the wage budget. We're prepared to play the pre-contract game again, although I don't think I'll sign as many veterans as I did uh, last season. But uh, Heel, I think, deserves a new deal. But the question is, what squad role is he going to accept? He's not a crucial first-team player, despite that being his current role right now. He needs to duck that down to, at the very least, important Otherwise, we're going to have to let him go. Ideally, I want to get him on a rotation deal, but I'm not entirely sure he'll accept that. And his agent has kicked things off by saying he wants to be a star in the team. Well, I'm sorry, mate, but Mr. Healy's not a star in this team. He's regularly on the bench, and he's got to be prepared to duck it down. I want rotation, but he's saying no, crucial. If they don't go down to important at the very, very, very least, I'm not sure this is going to work out for us. No, he wants to be crucial, but at the end of the day, he's not going to be a crucial first-team player. So what we'll do is we will accept it, but if he's going to be a crucial first-team player, it, we'll, we'll, just look, we'll just have to look to sell him. We'll have to look to sell him, agree to get him on a new deal so he doesn't leave on a free, and then sell him in January or sell him in the summer, because I'm sorry, but he's not a crucial first-team player here. Simple as that. So four-year deal, no release clause, totally fine with that as well. And as for the money, let's find out what he wants. We'll offer him what he's on right now, which is 32 grand a week, and we shall see what Carlos will say to that. Okay, uh, totally fine for the most part. 32.5k a week, so he's wanting, plus two big bulky bonuses, which will remove the appearance bonus, but keep the sign-on bonus as it is. That will probably see the wages go up a little bit to 38 grand a week, but hey, he's probably not going to stay here anyway. This just makes sure he won't leave on a free transfer. So, Carlos Heal, you're staying for now, but believe me, it's not going to be for much longer. You're not a crucial first-team player, son. You simply won't be at this club. That's a deal that's good for Aston Villa, but uh, not really good for Carlos Heal. So, moving on to the second off three games today and what a big test this is we're away from home at the Etihad Stadium take on Pep Guardiola's Manchester City who right now sits in third place but if we can win this game we will leapfrog them in the table and could move into the top four so that is our hope but I'll still take a point for the game uh, City's team though very good as we know 4-3-3 and a familiar face in the threatening front trio Sterling's on the right Gabriel Jesus is their striker but Moses Simon who we know all about is their inside four 
forward on the left in this game. We know he's going to be so hard to stop after our Huddersfield save. Uh, but as for our team, 3-5-2, of course, but a few changes to the lineup. Chester's back in and we're in the armband cut. Our Vickers plays as well, as does Fernando Torres for the out-of-form Codger up top. Bustos back on the right-hand side. And also, Yaya Torre will fill in alongside Fabian Delve as two ex-City players will return to the Etihad Stadium, hopefully help us get the win. We literally just faced Vitinho and now we've got to deal with Moses as well. I love it when you have those former career mode players of yours playing against you as well. You want to keep them quiet, of course, but uh, it's, it's always, it's just nice, you know what I mean? Like, two legends of my Huddersfield save. I had so much fun producing that one. And now they're playing against me for, for Aston Villa. It's just, it's brilliant. Torre finds some space. We know he can strike him. Goes for goal. And Joe Hart parries the shot away from his ex-teammate. Torre in the team with a point to prove. And I'm expecting a big game from the big Ivorian today. De Bruyne, Sterling, 1-0. 1-0. And literally, they just incisively pass their way inside and Sterling fires at home. And just like the Bournemouth game, we've conceded very early. You know, I know this is going to be a really tough game for us. Away from home at the Etihad Stadium against third place Manchester City. We're not in good form in the league right now. Only one win in our last four. We barely ever win away from home, but I mean, look at how easy this is here. Just to pass their way inside, straight to an unmarked Sterling, who pops into the bottom corner in the near post. 1-0. We've got to sort our defence out, man. Seriously, it's embarrassing. I feel like we need a class centre-back for next season because James Chester doesn't fill me with much confidence. We haven't really got leaders out there, if you know what I mean. As Grealish tries his luck and Hart makes his save and Kyle Walker gets away. We don't have leaders in our back line. Yes, of course, with time, you'll see Dale Fry, Cameron Carter, Vickers, Zagadou, Palmer Brown. These players pick up those qualities, but to begin with, they're, just, they're, they're young, they're inexperienced, and that's a real problem for us. We need a leader, and we need a more experienced defender for either the January transfer window or for next season. As Grealish finds Brereton, Brereton turns, Brereton shoots, and again, Joe Hart makes the save. What a start for Hart. Don't get me wrong, I really like our young centre-backs in this team. You know, they're, they're, They've all got really good talent and a lot of potential. So in the future, our back line is going to be safe as ours is. But to begin with, right now, they're not secure. And, and that's what we need to change right now. We need, we need quality in the back line now, not later. If we are going to stop leaking silly goals like that, as Shook finds Grealish, there's a chance on the break here. Torres is there as well. Can I feed him through? I can, but Mangala tracked him well. But Torres cuts inside and drills it home. And there's our equaliser. And we might not be able to keep many clean sheets at the moment, but we can score goals. And Torres capitalises on on his start as he fires it home and puts us back on level terms. 1-1. One, one. Grealish to Torres. I was waiting for Mangala to leave him alone. He never did. So Fernando said, don't worry, Jack. Just give me the ball and I'll do it myself. Takes it around with a body faint. Drills it past Hart. He's had a great start to the game for his first goal back in the Premier League. Manchester City 1, Aston Villa 1. He's still got it, baby. Manchester City looking to get back in front just before half time, though. Jason Denayer on the ball. Spreads the play towards Christian Eriksen. And Eriksen... Keeps hold of it, gives it back to the Belgian. Denayer inside, Jesus knocks it off. De Bruyne shoots, De Bruyne scores. And just before the break, Manchester City restore their lead and go in front. It's the Belgian who is so hard to stop. It's 2-1, and we conceded again. I wasn't too mad about the Bournemouth goal. That was quite unlucky. But the two goals we conceded today, look at how easy that is. Just to incisively pass it through and open up our back line. Yeah, we, we need we need defenders. We, we need more and better defenders for, for the new season, no doubt about it. Because right now, halfway through the year, look, as things stand, there's no way we're going down. We're going to be saved, and that's good enough for us. Everyone knows that. And we could possibly have a run for a European competition too. But if we want to really improve this club, we need better defenders defenders now we've got to improve our back line because the young ones just currently don't have it at the moment in the future they're going to be amazing Dale Fry Eric Palmer Brown Zagadou Cameron Carter Vickers four amazing centre-backs to watch for the future but at the moment just don't have the quality and and that is the genuine honest truth the second half has had very little chances in it at all and unfortunately, that is where the final whistle is going to be blown. Final score at the Etihad Stadium. It's yet more misery on the road for Aston Villa. 2-1 to the host. De Bruyne's goal just before the break separates the sides. 
And again, we taste defeat. One win in five now. We didn't play too badly, really. It's just that most of our shots came from range in this game and we didn't really get inside too many times. We did score the one time we really broke City down, but for the most part, the defence was really tight as they got through and got the win as well. But no surprises for man of the match. Scored their second goal and set up the first. KDB, who, as we all know, is absolutely amazing and he showed his full range of qualities in this game as well. Two on the final score, one win in five. We really are slipping down the table and really struggling at the moment. And I did say I would show you guys my shortlist as well as Pajac here is complaining about his role at the club. Boss, when I signed my contract with this club, you made me certain promises with regards to my role here, but I do not feel you're currently fulfilling those. What? Mate, you're, you're on a, a sporadic deal, aren't you? I'm pretty sure he is. Isn't he on a sporadic deal? Yeah, it's sporadic. What are you talking about? Mate, wait for your chance and take it when you get it. Um, I did say I was going to show you my shortlist. And uh, right now I'll show you who we currently have on the transfer of shortlist. Obviously, Benteke is still here. Uh, Barco is still here. We're still thinking about that. We can't get him this season. He's far too expensive for us. But there are some pre-contract players. And we were talking about the centre-back role as needed to be improved. And there are a couple of players here that I think would be really good. Uh, Johannes Geist can play there and also through the middle of the park as well. Low, medium work rates with a four-star weak foot as well. I think he'd be a really good ball-playing centre-back in this team, to be honest. And uh, a pretty decent player to pick up on a free transfer. We can sign him on a free, can't we? Pretty sure we can. Uh, yeah, I know we can. We scouted them all. Uh, Mike van der Horn of uh, Swansea as well. Six foot three, very strong and can jump as well. So he would really help reassure our back line as well. And a power headed trait as well. Not too shabby. Uh, a new goalkeeper, McCarthy. Perhaps with Steele is going to leave. We can sign a new third choice goalkeeper. Uh, Tom Kearney, who I've talked about so many times as a guy that is playing beneath his level. This guy's in the championship. He deserves to be in the Premier League. I rate Tom Kearney so highly. Really, really great technical player. And then a really good centre-back that I think would help us a lot. 30 years old, we need a veteran, we need a thug, we need a real leader at the back. Socrates, physically, absolutely amazing, 30 years old, with some great defensive stats as well. He would cost us quite a bit of money on the wages, but on a free transfer, I certainly wouldn't say no. And also I thought Angel Di Maria could be quite good as well, uh, obviously the, uh, the winger, uh, currently playing for PSG. Still got it perhaps at 30 years old, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Lars Bender as well from... Um, by Leverkusen, would also be a pretty decent player in this team, could also be signed on a free, as can Victor Ruiz, a Noah centre-back, who I thought would be really good as well, 83 rated, 29 years old, 6 foot 1, 85 strength, some good defensive stats, and he's on really cheap wages as well, very cheap wages indeed, at just 38 grand a week too, so yeah, quite a lot of players on the shortlist right now, not sure who we'll be going for out of them, but um, I'm sure one of which will be signed on a pre-contract, heading into season 3. So third and final game today and we are back home two days after our loss to Manchester City as we welcome Southampton aiming to get back to winning ways and end the year strong heading in to 2019. Uh, our team of course for the game is the 3-5-2 as always. Not going to abandon the formation yet despite just one win in our last five games but loads of changes to the lineup, including Toby Lewis coming back into the CM role, the young 16 year old. Green starting on the left, Dempsey starting in the cam role and up top together. Codge is back in alongside Rian Brewster but as for the Southampton team, uh, it's quite interesting. They're featuring Fosu Mensa, who, of course, we missed out on in the summer. God, we really wish we had him now. And also, Theo Walcott is back at the Saints. Isn't that a really nice signing? Uh, so, yeah, Southampton, third and final game today. And uh, let's return to winning ways. Come on, Villa. Here is the new Everton man, Theo Walcott, storming down the right-hand side. Trying to get around Andre Green as he finds Duzan Tadic. And Tadic, what a ball. And Shane Long should have made it 1-0. In both our games today, we've conceded an early goal. I thought it was going to be all three. Shane Long through, and that should have been 1-0 to the Saints. Ball inside, but Zagadou pressured Shane Long. One thing I will say about our back three, whenever Zagadou's in the team, we're looking a lot more secure. We brought him in for his height. Six foot five, such a young kid, but I like him a lot. You know, signing from Borussia Dortmund permanently, and just like with Eric Palmer Brown last season, he became a regular in our back three. Zagadou is doing the same thing as Brewster is tackled by Fossi Mentor in a corner. I think, you know, for all of our defensive problems this year, the one person you can't point the fingers at is Dan Axel Zagadou. As that corner might drop to Young. Oh, what a save by McCarthy. Brilliant save. Still 1-0. Can we get ourselves the first goal? Dempsey flicks on and Sam McQueen gets it away. It's been a very fast start to the game, but still deadlocked at 0-0. Kodja 
Dempsey, oh, what a goal. Clint Dempsey back in the team, saluting the fans as he shows us what he did all season long as he breaks the deadlock 25. And it was coming, it was coming. We had the early pressure and we get the early goal. 1-0 and it's Clint Dempsey with a lovely half volley. Kodju's not scoring at the moment, is getting assists, flicks it on and that's a brilliant goal by Dempsey. Wonderful technique, chests it, half volleys it, fires it in. 1-0 Aston Villa. We still love you, Clint. We foul for the Saints through too long. Don't surrender the lead just for the break, lads. Don't surrender the lead. Long on the ball, crosses. Lewis gets it away. And, uh, and that should be the first half done. Nope, Saints have one more chance. Walcott, long, long. Oh, fabulous save, Pepe Reina. What a stop. Padic for the Saints into long. Green is there. Palmer Brown clears. And Toby Lewis boxes out his man and gets away from Theo Walker. What work from the young 16-year-old. And now through to Young. And Ashley turns. And is still on the board. And in a teammate inside the area, though. Who's getting in? Young crosses. Cleared. Kodja. Cleared again. No. Brewster, Dempsey, McCarthy. How is it still 1-0? Sotian Bufau, long ball. Cameron Carter Vickers heads it clear. And to be fair to the boys in the back line, I slagged them off in the last game. They've responded. Henry, Kodja, down left-hand side. Men coming forward. One is Rico. Just got to work the space here. Just got to work the space. Dempsey, Adams. Oh, McCarthy again. I'm definitely picking this guy up. How is it still 1-0? He's been unbelievable. This is ridiculous. McCarthy is having the game of his life to keep the Saints in this. Henry's cross, Dempsey, no! If they get an equalising goal, Alex McCarthy deserves a five grand bonus. Well, thankfully McCarthy's bank account won't have an incoming transaction because they didn't get the equalising goal. Final score, Aston Villa 1, Southampton 0. And we've just about returned to winning ways. But Alex McCarthy, unbelievable. Southampton didn't play too badly in this game. The problem was, despite creating chances, their finishing was really poor. But for us, we took the one chance we needed in the end in the first half through Clint Dempsey. But for man to match, it will have to go to Alex McCarthy. Because if he wasn't on that pitch for Southampton, they would have conceded 5, 6, 7 goals. He was absolutely phenomenal. 6.9. 6.9. Flip those ratings around and that's a bit more fair. But I will shout out Jonathan Codger though. Uh, once again, no goal for him. But right now he's picking up the assists like I do in my player. Turning into a support striker. And if he's not banging them in, at least he's creating them. 1-0 to the final score. They'll return to winning ways. And that's the way we wanted to end the calendar year. Come on. And as the new year is here, we will end, of course, with a look at the league table, as we always do. We're still in sixth place, 18 games in, but it's still been a very good first start of the season, winning 50% of our games. That's impressive uh, for a newly promoted team. And uh, also, uh, we'll briefly, we'll find out the transfer window has indeed opened, and that means that we've lost, uh, lost two of our players in Gary Gardner and Henry Lansbury. We've both gone to Middlesbrough and Leeds United as well. And Carlos Heel. Well, this is quite interesting. Just sign a new four-year deal. Boss, we need to have one more chat. This transfer window is a chance for me to get away and make a new start. Please give me that opportunity by selling me. Well, you just signed a new four-year deal, Carlos. But okay, fine. I'll put you on the transfer list because I, I do like him. I do like him, but uh, it's, it's not fair to keep him here against his wishes if he wants to go and he's not going to be a crucial first team player. So it's a good move for us, making sure we get a transfer fee for him. But um, yeah, Carlos, he won't be staying for those four years. He probably won't stay for the next four weeks. But uh, that wins this episode of Career Mode, though, guys. So a big thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We've now got £9 million in our budget, give or take, with some wage budget alteration. The January window is open. You see my shortlist. What players should we go for in the January window? to improve this Aston Villa team. Thanks for, watching today's, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching today's episode, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've had a fantastic week as well and enjoyed the travel upload day today as well. Much love to you all. Have a great Sunday night and I'll see you for the next episode of Korea where hopefully we'll make one or two signings in the January window very soon.